Well, the pace of work starting on new homes fell nationwide in January. That's according to a report from the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation that was released on Friday. It was actually released a little bit prematurely. Joining us is David Madani. He's senior economist at Capital Economics, and he joins us right here in studio. Thank you for coming in. Is the slowdown that we've seen across Canada driven chiefly by Alberta, or is there more to it than that? No, it's mainly a mainly reflection of Alberta. Basically, the oil price shock is starting to filter through the housing market, and the January figures, again, reflected more of this sort of continued slowdown uh, in Alberta. There was also a de decline, for example, in Quebec, but this is mainly due with the multiples of the multi-unit segment of the market, which is historically quite volatile from one month to the next. Mm -hmm. But certainly when you sort of look at the details of the data, the, the continuing really story is just um, the downturn in, in the oil patch, if you will. And how bad is it in Alberta? It's getting pretty bad, yeah. I and mean, the numbers have fallen substantially right across the board. doesn't matter whether you're looking at apartments or single to attached housing, we're down 30%, 50%, depending on which segment you're looking at year on year. Mm -hmm. So definitely it's, it's happening. I still think it's early stages yet because obviously uh, producers are still coming to the grips with the fallout in oil prices and what it means for their investment plans. So I think really this is only the beginning of the slowdown as far as the housing market for Alberta goes. So on the flip side, you know that you, you have the energy sector really weighing on, on Alberta, but you know we've been reading a lot more in the news about uh, the West Coast and mm -hmm. how prices are accelerating and making new highs. You know, what are you seeing in the data there and is this likely to persist? Well, that, that's the key question. I mean, Vancouver market, of course, is, the prices in that market have been, what I would argue, is completely detached from household incomes for a number of years. In fact, there was an article in the Globe and Mail today about concern now that there's been sort of cases of flipping and speculation in the Vancouver market, which isn't a surprise to us because we think it's all just a credit-driven asset bubble. Part of it to do with foreign investors flooding in. But I think there's more to the story than just that. I think it's just a reflection of the the easy uh, credit, uh, low interest rates. And it, the market there really is just out of control. And so I'm not surprised to hear these stories of flipping that we've seen in today's Globe Mail. As far as how long it can go on for, well, that's a million dollar question. Uh, it's not really been driven by economic fundamentals. So, you know, when some, some people ask us, you know, what would be a trigger for the Vancouver, for a correction in the Vancouver housing market? Well, in my mind, that's like asking, what's a rational trigger for an irrational market? So obviously, it's a bit difficult to but do you, pinpoint you, that. But you, you do use the phrase bubble. People may get nervous when they hear an yeah. economist referring to one of the hottest real estate markets in Canada being in bubble territory. How, how inflated is that bubble? How detached are prices from what, they're, what, what properties are really worth? Well, if you, if, you, if you look at sort of the typical price to income multiple ratios, which in Vancouver, it's up over 12 now, which historically is, even by international standards, it, it's off the chart. So if, it's really a problem of affordability. Um, even with today's low interest rates, when you look at mortgage carry cost ratios, you know they're up over 60% for median house prices vis-a-vis -vis median incomes, which historically is very rich. So, you know, affordability is horrible there. Now, if you talk to any local people in Vancouver, they'll tell you the affordability is a major problem. There's a lot of concern about the, the role of foreign investors. No one knows how strong it is because there's no data on it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's happening, but I don't think it's really the main driver for, uh, for the, the sort of the broad-based boom that we've seen in over there, uh, of course, it's happening across the country. Here in Toronto, of course, there's a lot of similar concerns. There's similar concerns in Australia. There's similar concerns in New Zealand. So it's happening all over the world. I think it's more of a global phenomenon rather than sort of local specifics. What are we seeing elsewhere in the country? We focus a lot on Vancouver mm -hmm. and Toronto when we talk about real estate markets, but there's obviously many, many people living yeah. elsewhere. What are we seeing, for instance, in Atlantic Canada or the other Western provinces? Uh, those markets, in terms of the resale, mm -hmm. the existing home market, those markets have slowed down quite a lot. It's really only, when you look at the house price data and home, existing home sales data, it's really just a Toronto and Vancouver story that's really holding up the national aggregate figures. But when you look elsewhere in the country, definitely housing markets have slowed down. In some markets, prices are just sort of going sideways. And obviously in regions that have been hit directly by the drop in oil prices, it's a different story. Prices are already falling there. So it's sort of a mixed bag right now. How, how helpful would it be to you as a, an economist who tracks these markets to have data on foreign purchases, the kind of data that you said a moment ago just isn't there? Yeah, I mean, as a macroeconomist, of course, I'd love to always have more data on anything. Uh, any economist would say we'd like to have more data. And certainly when it comes to housing in general, um, I think there is a sort of a, a deficit in terms of the amount of information available. Uh, it doesn't mean we're completely in the dark, but certainly when it comes to foreign investment, it would be definitely uh, good to have some information on just to try and quantify what impact the foreign buyers are having on the market. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, everyone's got an opinion on it. Uh, if you talk to anyone, even taxi drivers have an opinion <laughs> on, on, uh, on the Vancouver market in terms of foreign investors. So that's why I think we need uh, to see more data to, to try and determine, okay, exactly or quantify what impact is this actually having on these markets. Yes, it's happening, but 
I think that the, the sort of the foreign buyer is sort of a it's happening, but I think that case is sort of overblown. I think it's more to do about easy credit conditions, low interest rates, the willingness of banks to extend credit to younger households. I think it's just really about the credit cycle. So the Bank of Canada, who recently, you know, leaned that maybe a cut was in order. Yes. If they, you know. Yes. But but they didn't do it. No. Uh, so, so do you feel they're, they're they're obviously they're thinking about the imbalances in the housing market, mm. and if they go to cut interest rates, are they not just contributing to a problem that they're they're worried about? Yeah, they're definitely worried about it, and they, they realize that it's a risk. In fact, the governor went on the record to saying it's a risk that they're willing to take on because they're trying to encourage other sectors of the economy to grow, like the export sector, and obviously a you know, lower exchange rate helps that at that margin. So uh, yeah, the bottom line is they're well aware of the risks in the housing market. They see the same data that we see, um, but it's, they're prepared to take that risk on. What they're, of course, hoping is that macro prudential measures that the government has taken sort of sort of in steps and sort of, you know, as far back as 2008 will, will sort of help to cool uh, the housing market. Um, but of course in Vancouver and Toronto we've seen none of that, if anything, we've seen acceleration. So I would argue that those measures by and large have failed to, to cool the market down because prices have continued to accelerate. And that's partly because interest rates have continued to come down. And I think that's sort of kept the, uh, those markets staggering on. Thank you very much. You're welcome. David Madani is Canada economist at Capital Economics, taking us through the Canadian real estate market.